Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today we're gonna to take a look at a radio from Redivis, a Redivis radio. This is, I can't read that without my glasses on. This is the Redivis RT98. This is kind of an interesting little beastie here because it is a very, very, very tiny radio. It's so tiny they don't even tell you the power output on it, so we're gonna to have to take a look at that. But it operates on Freenet, which is a German only frequency range. It operates on two meters, it operates on 70 centimeters, and it also operates on PMR446. And you're gonna to need to unlock it to switch it between all of the different frequencies. This one is currently set up for UHF only, and so that's how we're gonna test it, and then I will show you the unlock procedure. Let's get over to the bench and take a look at what we get in the box. Of course, we get a manual, and the manual comes in a couple of different languages, but there is quite a bit of information in there. Let's see what else we have. We have a microphone holder. We have a bunch of mounting hardware and an extra fuse. And this came out of that bag back in there. Look at this little mounting bracket. I mean, if the size of the box didn't give away how small this thing is, look at how small this mounting bracket is. That should, that should also give you some information. I mean, you can kind of see the radio there. We'll get to that in a minute, be patient. There she is. Look at how tiny that thing is. We lost another mobile mounting part. These things are just jumping out of the bags. I guess this radio just wants to be installed and used and not cooped up in this box anymore. It looks like the microphone is permanently mounted to the radio, which is kind of an interesting choice. There is an external speaker jack on the back, a UHF connector, or as we call them in the ham business, this is an SO239. And then you get your permanently affixed power cable with a couple of raw leads on the end. So we're gonna put those into a set of Anderson Power Pole to Wago connectors. And these things here come in quite the handy because they are quite handy. And that may or may not work because there may or may not be enough wire stripped off of it, but we will cross that bridge when we get to it. And then there is a speaker on the bottom of the radio. So this would work great with how small this is. This would work great to, uh oh, hold on. Before I lose my thought here and before I lose my job, um, this would work great to mount like actually on a visor above your head inside the car because it wouldn't take up any room at all. You would not even notice that thing up there. It is so tiny. I like it. It is on and running. And to turn it on and off, you push in on the volume label. RT98U, it comes up as it's programming. That does your volume. Open the squelch. All right, let's see about power level settings in this ridiculously thick manual that is in four or five different languages. Nice, basic function. The fun key is the function key. The VM key has no use. The SCA key has no use. The squelch key opens the squelch. The volume knob is the power on, off, and volume key. And then it has some indicators. Press the function key until F icon appears on the display. And then press VM for no use. SCA for channel scan, delete, or add. CTCSS or DCS setting when you press the squelch button. Or function volume to lock the keypad. And there's, there's no keypad. Keep pressing the function key to enter the menu mode. Okay, so let's press function longer. So press function once and you get this F in the corner here. Let's long press function and something else is supposed to happen. Speaker, power. Okay, so you rotate the knob to power and then push the volume button. There's low, middle, and high. Let's take a look at what those power levels look like. Plugged into our trusty power meter here and let's key down. Four watts on low power. All right, this is mid power, eight watts on mid power, and this is high power. Twelve and a half watts on high power. That's not bad for this little tiny radio, really. Let's take a look at the rest of this long press, this deep F menu. So we have speaker, power, band, that's your bandwidth for your signal that you're transmitting. Busy, busy channel lockout. Name, you can name your channel. TX is transmit inhibit, I believe. So you transmit is on or transmit is off. Reverse is to reverse your repeater settings. Talk is your talk around. Shift is your uh, shift direction for your repeater. Leave that off. Offset, step, display. And this is you can have your display as your frequency or your name or your channel. And we'll leave it at frequency. TOT is timeout timer. APO is auto power off. So 30, 60, 120. I'm gonna leave that off. That'll save your car battery. So you will set it for 120 if you think most of your driving is gonna be under 120 minutes. Squelch is your squelch settings, currently at three. AOP, not sure what AOP is. MIG, not sure what MIG is. Reset, and then we're back to the beginning. 
Okay, let's look up what those last few menu options are. It'll do CTCSS scans and DCS scans. That's nice. Okay, MIG was mic gain. Power on method. So it'll either automatically power on when you apply power or it will only come on when you turn it on. So if you put this in your car, you can have it set up so that it works off of the ignition being turned on. And then the entire manual in, in English is 20 pages and then the rest is the rest of the languages. One of the drawbacks of having this little teeny tiny radio is that there isn't any way to enter any frequencies into the radio itself. You need to program this thing. You need to get one of these programming cables or you need to be handy enough to build one, an FTDI USB interface and a TR, TRS tip ring sleeve connector will make this a happy day for you. This will also get you audio out of the back of the radio if you wanted to try and fool with some of that stuff. But in order to do data modes with this, you need to cut the cord on the front in order to get PTT signal and voice into or audio data into the radio to get it out over the airwaves. This is also the same cable that you're gonna to need to do the frequency unlock that I'm gonna show you here. And there will be a link in the description down below. This comes from the Redivis Solutions website. And if the website isn't there, at least it will be captured in archive form in this video. And if we scroll all the way down here, it says you need the programming software, which I will have a link for in the description down below as well. Step one, connect the radio to the USB cable, connect the USB cable to the computer. Step two, open the software. If you have the VHF version, you need the V version of the software. If you have the UHF version, you need the U version of the software. I think that's probably <clears throat> bullshit. Because if you got the V version of the software and then you converted it to the U version of the radio, do you have to re-download the software and try all over again? I don't think so. Select the port that your cable came up as and then go into the radio settings in the software. And here's where it gets to be a little bit interesting. There is a mode dropdown. It gives you a choice of COM, PMR, or COM2. And it says up here that VHF freeband, which doesn't appear in the dropdown list. Maybe that's why you need the V or the U software. And this is that special German only band. This isn't um, VHF in the US amateur call sign space. It's just uh, Freenet over in Germany. And then COM is 136 to 174, which would be inclusive of two meter ham radio bands, just don't transmit out of band. And then COM2 is 147 to 174. And then UHF is 446 to 462. And so those are your choices for your different frequency ranges. All right, let's see if this radio is supported by Chirp. Chirp has a new website, chirpmyradio.com. And if we look on here, there is a Redivis section. There's a whole lot of radios listed here. I'm gonna use the search function in the browser. Okay, it shows up at the bottom of the list under the Redivis column. You can see it right here as RT98. And that's a lot of Redivis radios that are supported by Chirp. So there you go, Redivis RT-98. That'll make programming this radio that much easier. This is a really neat little form factor for a radio. I kind of wish that it had buttons on the microphone so that you could change frequencies and do some front panel type programming. You can only program this through the programming software. If you happen to live in a stationary place, and aren't traveling around like I am, that would probably be just fantastic. This radio could also make out a pretty nice little go box with a small battery and an antenna fixed to it. And at 12 watts, you'd be able to get on the air and get pretty good coverage overall in your local area. Most HTs are about five watts. So this thing is twice the power of your standard Baofeng, which means it goes a lot greater distance when you're trying to communicate and your signal has a little bit more punch compared to everybody else on their HTs. There will be links in the description down below for more information on this radio. And as of the time of filming this radio, it is $76. And then you wanna add another $10 for that programming cable. We've always got some new radios to play with on this channel. If you like getting the lowdown dirty on all of the lowdown dirty radios that are out there, then be sure you are subscribed for more stuff like that on this channel. There's a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.